Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to review and unbox Obi-Wan's Jedi Interceptor. This is Series 3 from Micro Galaxy Squadron. This is a bundle pack that can be found on Amazon for $19.99. Now, I already reviewed Anakin's Jedi Interceptor, so if you haven't seen that video, be sure to check that out. It also came with a blind box, but I won't spoil what I pulled, you're just going to have to check out that video. Now there isn't a way to purchase this Jedi Interceptor by itself, you have to do it through the bundle. I'm sure maybe down the road these will be hitting retailers, but honestly I'm okay with there being a bundle pack because I don't know when we're going to get some more Series 3 blind boxes. I know I found some Series 2 at my local HEB, but to be able to secure a ship that I really want and a blind box for $19.99 I think is a great deal. So I've honestly had these ships for a few days, but I've been creating a lot of content for Pokemon Day, so I wanted to open these blind boxes up on the channel. Obviously you're sent one at random, this has been sealed, I have not opened it whatsoever even though the tape is kind of flared right there, but this is still sealed, I have no idea what's inside of it. And I'm hoping to honestly get a chase, so it looks like Cad Bane, a Scout Trooper, and I believe that's Count Dooku are the main chases. I mean, I would love to have all three of them, but I would say Cad Bane and Dooku would be my number one. Between these three series of blind boxes, there's different arts to each of them. So Series 1 has some original trilogy going on, Series 2 has some Clone Wars-esque, and then Series 3 has just honestly Revenge of the Sith going on. Here is the barcode to help you track this down whenever it does eventually hit retailers. All right, here we go, live on camera. Let's see what we get. Hopefully, I don't pull what I pulled from Anakin's Jedi Interceptor. So hopefully we get Cad Bane and I got... Okay, I got a Stormtrooper on a turret. This is actually perfect because out of all the commons, I would have wanted this one or tech. So I definitely think there's a lot of value to pulling this as a common. I mean, there's a lot of plastic and a lot of stuff going on. So it has our traditional transparent stand, but there is a ball there. So we can take this turret and then underneath there's some awesome sculpting to it. So there's a socket joint. We can just place this turret on top and now we can maneuver it all different directions. So the paint apps on this look really good. It looks like the top part of the turret can move 360 degrees and I don't think it can move. Oh, it can, it can move up and down a little bit. So that's great. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of value to this. And there's also a, a little clear clip or stand to be able to hold the Stormtrooper. And then the paint apps to the Stormtrooper are just far better than what we saw with Series 1. All right, here's the Stormtrooper rocking that turret. And yeah, this is pretty awesome. Now I want like eight more of these. This is really cool. All right, let's throw some measurements up since I have it here. So if I'm just going to display it on top of the stand, it looks like it's about an inch and a half. And then if I have him ground level, we are, man, just at an inch tall, it looks like. And then from the tip of the turret to about where the stormtrooper is standing, looks like we are about an inch and three quarters, so just under two inches. So yeah, I definitely think this is a big win for being a blind box, and I would love to have more pieces like this that we can add and fill into like our terrains and like our backdrops and things like that. I think that would do really well because that would really allow you to expand into like basically a micro world. So I'm all for that if they continue to do stuff like this. Okay, that was great. I'm glad I was able to share that with you on camera. So here it is, Obi-Wan Kenobi's Jedi Interceptor. And so if you watched my Anakin Skywalker's Jedi Interceptor, then you pretty much know what this ship can do. But I'm still gonna go over everything anyway. So here's the back of the packaging. It is our traditional box art that we've already seen within series one and three of Micro Galaxy Squadron. You can see we have R4 able to sit on the side of the ship. There are some fins on the sides of the wings that can articulate 50 degrees, and there's also some landing gear that can open up to a 90 degrees. And here are some more ships released in this series. So we have a First Order TIE Fighter, Anakin's Jedi Interceptor, we have Plo Kloon's Jedi Starfighter, and Ayla Secura's Jedi Interceptor. Unfortunately, Plo Kloon's and Ayla Secura's Starfighters are both chases, but I believe they are one out of 15,000, so if it's anything like the Outland TIE Fighter, it hopefully shouldn't be too difficult to find them. Here is the barcode to help you track this down in store once they finally start hitting retailers. As of right now, they are only on Amazon, but I mean, that should change hopefully in the near future. All right, here it is out of the packaging. Now, I am a big fan of these ships. I just love the prequels in general, so I vividly remember watching Revenge of the Sith for the very first time. This opening scene, you know, when Obi-Wan and Anakin are flying together, I just knew that this was the beginning of the end, and it was just a very bittersweet moment. 
So one of the things that I really love about these ships is how sleek and like aerodynamic while also being aggressive they are and they're also still very like elegant like this would definitely be something that a Jedi would fly. This is now our third appearance of Obi-Wan, so starting on the right hand side. This was our Jedi Starfighter Obi-Wan. Series 2 had a chase of Commander Obi-Wan riding a bark speeder I believe and then this is our Series 3 Jedi Interceptor Obi-Wan. And honestly, they look pretty much the same. I would say the paint applications on Series 3 is definitely far superior than Series 1, but we've already seen that. We've already seen vast improvements from paint details from Series 1 now moving forward. But his hair does look the same for the most part. It kind of looks like Episode 2 hairstyle rather than, you know, being more long and kind of combed over to the side. And then I'd say it looks like there is more sculpting to his belt and maybe his, like, boots are like a little bit thicker and then just the overall color of his Jedi robes seem a little bit of a lighter wash. And then R4 is basically the same sculpt. I would say our series one is a little bit glossier whereas series three is a little bit more matte and then just some darker tones with series three as well. All right, let's measure this baby up. So from front to back, we are looking at about three and a half inches long. And then if I'm going from width Left to right, we are just at three inches. Height with the landing gear, we are just barely over an inch, almost an inch and a quarter. And then with both fins opened up, we are definitely at an inch and a half. All right, here is the top of the ship, so you can see the sculpting throughout. We have some decals indicating that this is a Republic ship. There's no real weathering to it, but that's okay because we can apply a black wash later. You can see the spot where R4 sits on this little peg. There's some turrets here at the front and maybe like some longer cannons here. So there is four fins to the wings. So when you open them up, it gives it more of that aggressive like attack type of look. The design is just so good because I mean, you totally see how this would lead into the original trilogy type of vehicles. So, you know, this front window right there is something that we see within TIE Fighters. And then when you open up these wings right there, you can see there is some texturing to the fins. And then that is something that we also see on the TIE Fighters moving forward. And then underneath the panel, you can see there's some sculpting to it and then just like a slotted area that leads to the underside of the wing. And then you close these up and they remain flush to the ship. To the back of the ship, there's like two thrusters there with some sculpting to them. And then that will lead us to the underside. And you can see how the landing gear is folded into the body of the ship, which I love that. I mean, it makes the ship that much more authentic. And then something that you also don't see are the little screw holes to hold the ship together. So I imagine that most of the ship is probably commercially glued together. I mean, there might be like a few screws hidden underneath these panels, but I love that because that also makes the ship look more authentic. And then here's how we can fold out the landing gear. So there's like a little lip on the side of it and then that's how they look sticking out. So the last piece of articulation is gonna be here at the cockpit. So we can open up this hatch and you can see there's some sculpting to the chair. There's like some levers and buttons and mechanisms and like flying components. And there's a little bit of weathering. I mean, there's no paint applications or anything like that, but there is some like staining to the seat to give it that more weathered appearance. And then if you look closely at the headrest, you can see how they sculpted that. I mean, it just looks really good. I'm just always blown away by how much detail they're able to pack in these small ships. And then they go one step further. So there's this piece right here in the middle, and that actually goes in between Obi-Wan's legs, and that actually keeps the figure more in place so it doesn't like rattle around inside the ship. So for example, I have him seated, and I can tilt him upside down, and he is not flying out of there. I can shake it. There's no rattling and nothing like that, and that is just a great attention to detail. And then R4 is pretty straightforward. Just place him on top of that little peg, and he will sit in there nice and snug also. One final thing before we move on, you can actually display this ship with all the fins opened up, which I think is an awesome feature. It is a little front heavy, so if you put too much weight in the front, it will just lean forward but you can still display it in your collection opened up like this. Let's have a look at both Anakin and Obi-Wan's Jedi Interceptor side by side. It's honestly really great to have these and I'm glad we got them earlier within the series and not like, you know, within series seven, eight or nine because these are just really sought after ships and fan favorites. Here they are standing next to Ahsoka's Jedi Starfighter and Luke Skywalker's X-Wing. It's really crazy to think how small these single pilot ships are compared to something like an X-Wing and a Starfighter. And of course we have to throw in some of our larger starships and it's just crazy how like much these are dwarfed compared to these. I mean you can almost basically fit one of these babies inside of this gunship. 
And I know I went with the plain gunship on this, but I have my other ones hanging from the ceiling in case anybody is wondering, and I just didn't want to take them down right now. Okay, that's gonna wrap up this review and unboxing of Series 3 Micro Galaxy Squadron Obi-Wan's Jedi Interceptor. Right now, this can be found on Amazon as a bundle pack. So you get a blind box and this ship for $19.99. I will post all the links in my description below, which I think is a great deal because you're getting not only a new ship, but a blind box. And for me, it worked out really well. I didn't pull a chase, but I managed to get the Stormtrooper with the turret. And this thing has a lot of value, especially for it being a common. And you may get lucky and pull a chase. One of my friends, Greg, he pulled two chases from two separate interceptors. But I really love this ship. I'm a big fan of the prequels and Revenge of the Sith. So being able to have this in my collection is a big win. There honestly isn't a whole lot I would change about this. I think it's pretty awesome as it is, and I think you would enjoy it in your collection. So my only gripe would be accessibility. Some of the targets have been slowly trickling in some Series 2. I know in my area, there's only one target that actually stocks Series 2. And I'm hoping that's not gonna be the same for Series 3, but there is a lot of links on Amazon that have gone live that make it easier for you to pick these up. But all in all, I think these are so fun and definitely worth the price. But that is it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to find me on Instagram where I do toy photography, toy videos, toy hunts, toy deals, and all things toy related. I post heavily on my stories when new things drop, like the tiger shark. And this review is coming soon. But if you like this video and you want to see more of it, be sure to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And I will see y'all in the next video.